Hello, and welcome back to another Greenfoot lesson with Crow's programming course. Um, today we're going to add in some enemies to our maze, uh, and we're going to use some random numbers and teach you guys how to use that, as well as uh, experimenting a little bit more with the parameters. And so, um, starting off, we're going to need to make a new subclass and create our enemy subclass. And let's go ahead and choose a spider. It's a good enemy to have. Okay. Um, and so if you notice when you if you add one in, and you right click and save the world. Okay. And then you go into your maze. Maze world code. Let's see if I can get this up and go. Okay. Enemy, enemy, new enemy. So they've declared the enemy added the object and I'm going to move this to the top just so we can see this a little bit better so I cut and paste so we have this enemy um, it's got at 121 164 is where I saved this enemy in um, but I want the this enemy to show up randomly and this shouldn't be here yet. We'll add that in in a little bit. But, so randomly enter the world. So I know my size is 750 by 550. So I need to use a green foot method. So if you went to your documentation in your maze class in your world, you would need to not go to this documentation. So if you go into your world up here, go into the API, and you go to your tree and go to Greenfoot, there is a method that they have already in there that is get random number. It's an int, so it will return an integer. Okay, and we need to just tell it what integer we want it to return. Okay, so now we're back in our maze, and I'm going to do greenfoot dot because I'm getting it from that greenfoot documentation that we were just talking about greenfoot dot get random number okay and I want it between 0 and 749 so if you do 750 that's that's the numbers that it's gonna get okay and then I do greenfoot dot get random number Oops. Uh, what is our height? 550? 550? And there's one more parentheses to close off our add object. And we should have it. That should do it. So now when we compile, go into our code, our spider enemy appears randomly all over the screen okay cool so now if we want to add in a few more let's go ahead and add three in so I'm just gonna copy paste but there's gonna be an error okay because this if we're adding in more than one we need to rename it something different every time <coughs> and the, excuse me and then when we do add object this enemy needs to be different every time. It might not come up with an error, but this enemy needs to be different every time because this would try to add in another of this enemy one, and it would just move it around and not move the other ones. Okay? So now we have three enemies in there, and they will appear randomly. Hopefully you don't get unlucky and get these enemies randomly on top of you. Okay? Alright, now we're gonna have to actually do some some work in the enemy class. So there's nothing in there yet. So first we need to make them move. So how do we want them to move? Well, I'm gonna do a public void move around code for my enemies. Remember always open curly bracket, enter, enter, close curly bracket. It makes you set up your method really well. Um, we're going to go ahead and say move 
I'm going to make them be pretty simple. Just move three and turn three. Okay, and just see what that does for us. Let's see. Okay. So if you don't have it in the act method, nothing will happen. Whoops. Move around. There you go. Okay. Cool. I think that'd be that'd be a good way to to make our enemies difficult. Okay. And then we need to go into Maze Runner and say what happens if you hit enemy. Okay, so you could, similar to the Boolean hit wall, you could have that and say if you hit enemy, a you lose screen pops up or something of that nature. Um, Boolean hit enemy. If is touching enemy dot class true true return true else return. And I notice there's no green coming all the way down to the bottom, so I have not closed off my curly brackets correctly. Okay, otherwise I could just, there's an error, reached end of file while parsing. So that means it reached the end and it's still looking for more. It's still spinning its wheels, trying to figure out what, what's next. Okay, so now you would need to say something that would happen if you hit the enemy. Okay, so you could do that in the act method. You could make a public void hit enemy and have something different happen. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do public void you lose if hit enemy uh, get world. So we're gonna access the world's API. If I go in here, go into my class world, it's, there's going to be a uh, add object. Okay, we're going to add a you lose. So now we go back to maze runner, get world dot add object. So let's reach into file one person. Okay. Get world dot add object new you lose comma uh, three seventy five comma two seventy five somewhere around there. I think that's right. Okay, so now we need to add a you lose, or I won't know what you lose is. So you lose, you win. Hmm. Import from file. Let's see if we have a you lose. I like it. Okay. Now you need to call that method or it won't work. Go back into Maze Runner. Let's say I got an error, anyways. Get world open close parentheses. That's one. And then you need to go 
else. Oh, we're not doing anything else. Okay. So we need to copy. Add this. Make sure this is the last method that you have. Um, and then we need to do also greenfoot.stop, which will stop your game. Okay. So if I go and I get hit, lost season finale. Um, so your you lose screen comes up, and maybe you, you guys probably have more creative ways to add in a you lose screen. Um, and the reason I chose those numbers on the you lose screen is because it is, let's see, what is that times two is 750, I think. And then this times two is 550. And so that would be the center of the screen. If you do half of the height, the total height of your world. So in your maze, in your world, if the height is 750, 550, half it and half it, you got the center. Okay. Now let's have these, let's add in more enemies um, as the world keeps going. So it makes your game more and more difficult. Public void act. And we are going to, um, well, we're going to create a number that at pluses. Okay. So we're going to do, um, and time equals zero. And we're going to time plus plus this continually adds to the time 60 times per second because that's the speed of our world how many times the act method is running so if time um, well I'm gonna teach you guys something very new and you don't need to know for a long time 120 um, not 230 Okay, so then you will make that actually 120, and what this this is a percent sign, and this is called a modulus, and it um, or modulo, and it takes the remainder of this number. So if you divide it by 120, and that happens to equal zero, that would mean that if you take whatever time is divided by 120 it would have to be divisible by zero. So 120, 240, 360, etc., etc. Okay, and then so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do get, well, we're already in the world class, so all we need to do is add objects, new uh, enemy, and we can do greenfoot.getRandomNumber750, uh, Greenfoot.getRandomNumber550 and what that should do, let's see if we have any errors, looks like we got one, parentheses, yeah, so you got to make sure you cover your parentheses at the end. Oh, this is more like the maze game that we learned. Yeah. So then you add in and every two seconds another spider should appear. Now, if that's too fast, which I think it is, we need to increase this. So if, if you increased it by 60, that would be the number of seconds longer it would take for another one to come in. So I'm going to actually double that and eh, I'm going to triple it. So let's do 360. And so every about approximately every three seconds. Oh, you got unlucky with the spiders there. Okay, you lose. Okay, every three seconds, another spider will come in. So there's one. There's two. 
annulus. Okay, so you can edit that however you want. You don't have to have your spiders turning in a circle. You can have them turn or move in a different way. So if we just had them turn, well, let's have them turn sharper. And then they don't make quite as much impact. They're kind of just right there. Okay, but then if you speed it up, we'll start adding in a lot of spiders randomly all over the screen. Okay. So once we do that, um, you can, what I challenge you guys to do on your own is instead of creating it where if you hit a spider, you lose, you can make a you win screen um, or on your own have the spiders move in a different way, have them move at an angle and wrap at edge, have them uh, turn sharper or have them even potentially bounce off these walls back and forth when you have to move it around. So. I'm going to let you guys do that on your own, and I'll help you in the next video. Um, edit the spiders, get the win screen up, and we'll uh, continue going from there. So thanks for watching. Until next time.